Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, have you ever wondered while extraction of iron or copper when we use the blast furnaces what happens exactly inside the furnace? Combustion. There are a lot of gases and a very high temperature. So now what happens to the walls of the blast furnace? Does the construction of the blast furnace get deconstructed? How does the blast furnace stay like that for so many purifications and extractions of iron? Well, the answer to all this is in this session. Let's get started with the introduction of refractory. So what are refractories? So refractories are materials which can withstand extremely high temperature without any signs of fusion or corrosion. Nothing will happen to refractories even if they are exposed to completely high temperatures and extremely high temperatures. For example, in a blast furnace, the temperatures which go on in the blast furnace are ranging from 800 degrees Celsius to 1400 degrees Celsius. Yet nothing happens to the walls of the blast furnace. Why? Because the interior walls of the glass furnace are lined with the refractory materials. So by virtue of refractory materials withstanding high degrees of temperature, high temperature, extremely high temperature, by the virtue of the property of refractory materials withstanding extremely high temperatures, they are used for lining the interior materials of blast furnace, crucibles, smelters and cancible, smelters and canciners. Apart from withstanding extremely high temperature, the refractories should also withstand extremely high pressures because inside the blast furnace there are high pressures as well. While choosing the refractories to line the internals of the blast furnace, we should keep the following properties in account. Firstly, the most important property, it should withstand extremely high temperatures. Well, the second important property is it should also withstand high pressures because there may be many conditions and many times there are high pressures happening inside the blast furnace. Thirdly, refractory materials should be unfazed by any gases or flames which are happening inside the blast furnace. The blast furnaces are places wherein hundreds of reactions keep on happening simultaneously to get the iron or to get the metal extremely purified. So if the refractories start interacting or reacting with these gases and flames, it will form different kind of impurities which will also burden up on the metal. So the refractory material should not react at all with any flames, any oxides or acids which are being present in the combustion, during the combustion. The next very important property is the refractory material should not be corroded with the formation of slag. Slag is a very important byproduct which always comes out when we try to purify the metal. And if this slag con combines with the refractory materials, it is of no use when next time we use the blast furnace for purification of the metal again. So the slag should not affect the blast furnace at all. For that, the refractory material should not be any way reactive with the slag. The last very important property of the refractory materials which should be kept into consideration is it should have uniform expansion and contraction. So in this session we studied about the introduction to refractories. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.